In fact, some time back, I was uh, reading this one of this research that they say whatever we learn, 90% of that we forget in about a week's time. So <laughs> that is all the more reason to come to these satsangs at least once a week, <laughs> because unless we they say that unless we put it into practice and revise, yeah, it is going to happen for all of us. So uh, today's Bhagavad Gita satsang, I'm choosing a shloka from 18th chapter where Krishna is saying, thus with love, absorb all your heart's feelings in me. With heart absorbed in me, you shall by my grace overcome every impediment. As many of you might be knowing that Swamiji, when he wrote books on material success and leadership, he always wanted, he, in fact, in one of the satsangs, he said, I want 10,000 people at least to take these teachings to corporates, to business life, because people need these teachings. And as you might be knowing that under the leadership of Brahmachari Aditya, some of us are taking this service in last one and a half year. And as, a, as to prepare some of my presentations, you know, just a few days back, I was listening to some of the videos of these people, those who are contemporary leaders in the business and in different fields. So I was listening to some of the talks of Steve Jobs and uh, Abdul Kalam or Sundar Pichai and all these people. And in one of the talks, in fact, Steve Jobs, who said that there was only one book on his iPad, which was autobiography of a yogi. And in his talk that he in fact gave 10 years back at Stanford University on the graduation day ceremony, if this talk is there on YouTube and recently I saw it and it has already hit almost 29 million hits, which is to the tune of almost three crore people, which means there is something in it that people are liking it. And as I was listening to his talk, in, he said one very interesting thing. There are, in fact, many interesting things, and I would... How many of us have listened to this talk already? So there are about two, three people. So, which means about just less than 5% people. And I would sincerely recommend that you should listen to this talk. And uh, one of the interesting things which he quoted there was that when he was 17 years old, he found a quote somewhere that one should live his life as if this is the last day of his life. And he said, when you live like this, someday you will definitely be right. So he said that he started living his life that day. And for 33 years, he said that he was practicing that quote. And every day he used to stand in the mirror before starting his day and ask himself that if he has to die that day, would he be still doing what he's doing? And if for many days the answer, if some of the days he said if answer was no, then that was the thing, that was the, you know, stimulus for him to see, to see that he should change himself. He should change the thing what he's doing. And he said that death is somehow one thing. It can be used as a tool because all of us know that it is something which is inevitable. And if we remember it all the time, somehow life starts prioritizing itself almost by itself. Which is to say that whatever is important, it always comes to the surface. You start thinking, okay, if this is, today is the last day and I have got these 16 hours, assuming that we sleep for eight hours. And if, let us say, I have to go to bed this day, which is a kind of sleep, they say is a kind of mini death. Because when we go to the bed and uh, sleep, there is no compulsory, compulsory, you know, thing that we will wake up and see the sunrise next day. It is just a hope that we may see it. So it is a kind of mini death. And as a result, you know, he said that all the things which, you, which are holding you back, it could be pride, it could be failures, it could be expectations. They somehow automatically take backseat and you start learning to put your best in everything that we do. Now, some of us, you might be realizing what has it to do with the Bhagavad Gita shloka that I am picking up here. But it will join the dots, you know, you will see that how is it important. You know, as Swamiji always used to say that death is the final exam of life. And 
all the life, in fact, we are trying to prepare for that final exam. And in one of the books, in fact, in Material Success Through Yoga Principles, he has written books on leadership also, which is the art of supporting leadership. And in Material Success also, there is a chapter when he talks about how can one become a good leader. And he gives almost maybe around 50 things which a leader should have. And in the end, he says that, but still put first things first. Because at, the, at death, you know, when we will be gone, and let us say God or Saint Gabriel or whatever will come and ask us, he will never ask whether you were a good leader. But he will ask only one question, and that is, do you love deeply? So in a way, you know, if this is the question which is going to be asked in the final exam, it is all the more, you know, that we know that there is an exam and also we know that what is the question paper. And if we know the question paper, we, I think we all of, all of us have a high likelihood of passing with flying colors because many people, those who are walking on the road, they don't even know that there is an exam which they have to give what to talk of question paper. But you see, the irony of life is that despite knowing, sometimes it takes us so long because we are not able to prepare for this simple question do you love deeply? And what does that mean? So I was thinking like, if this is the question, there are two parts, there are two things on which we have to see love and deeply. So let us first understand what is love. In fact, it was Swami's definition, which was entirely, you know, kind of, which I have never heard anywhere. He defined love as bliss in motion. Before that, I have never heard uh, of this definition. I don't know if whether you would, you might have heard it. But bliss in motion indicates that love is nothing but the other side of the bliss, which is to say that a person who has bliss, he only has a capacity to love. Because when you have bliss, you are sharing that bliss and that becomes love. And from what is the source of bliss? So that is to say, if God is the source of bliss, as we define him as Sachidananda, then first we have to seek him, and then only it is going to be possible to share that love. And in fact, if you see, this is one of the ways in which, you know, as I was thinking, there was one time, you know, when I used to think that efficiency is the only thing which matters. I used to do think that, and I still believe efficiency is important, but efficiency is not everything which matters. Because sometimes I, I was thinking like, okay, what is the difference between man and a machine? Sometimes even, sometimes, sometimes a machine can be more efficient than a man, isn't it so? If, some, if we have to, let us say, ask somebody a three-digit number, multiply it with a three-digit number, he may take it some time, but a calculator can do this immediately. And even in computers, if you see, they are talking about computer has a CPU, which they say is like a brain, even a machine has a brain. But, uh, you know, and they are these days talking about artificial intelligence, you know, which is to say that computers definitely will take the job of the brain which man has. But, you know, Swami used to say that however advanced computers we may make, but no computers will have two things. What are those two things? Consciousness and feelings. Which is to say, which is to, which is to say that consciousness. In fact, Swami himself said that feelings is nothing, or consciousness is nothing but feelings. Which is to say that this is, these are two synonymous things. No computer will ever have feelings, however advanced we may be, make it. Now, perhaps when I was thinking, like, what is one thing which differentiates a man from a machine is nothing but the quality of feeling. And there are many instances, in fact, where somebody asks Swami, sir, what is God? And he defined very beautifully, God is feeling. Someone asked Yogananda, sir, how will we relate to you when you will be gone? And he said, only love can take my place which is to say love again is nothing but an aspect of feeling. And in Bible also, there is a saying like this, those who are pure in heart, they will see me. So that means heart is one quality, which by and large is one thing which is 
making which is giving man an upper edge over the most advanced machine which can ever be made even in future and precisely this is the only thing you know which makes any act worthwhile if we say that is the only difference in fact what differentiates a work from karma yoga now people may choose to do any work but if we are not expressing love through that work if you are not expressing feelings through that work that work will not be very worthwhile doing it in fact swami at one point said that we have to realize to bring high quality in a work and highest quality can only come when we put feelings we put love in that work now come to the other point he said loving deeply so what does deep means and there are two ways in which we can understand deeply one is that as a ocean is deep in fact there is a book in which yogananda wrote many letters to rajarishi janakananda and he said that god's love is like like an ocean which has no depth which has no bottom which is to say that you can go so deep that you will never touch bottom and precisely this is the reason that people saints those who find god and attain nirvikalp samadhi they can keep loving him on and on and on and they will never be able to touch the bottom of god's love of ocean or ocean of love and that is why nobody comes back when they find god it is only very few the avatars they come because of compassion to help mankind that they come from that highest state of joy and bliss to help human beings so that we can also reach that point now imagine how what amount of love and joy god will be which has no bottom it is never going to finish never going to finish at any point so with these thoughts but then another point came and there was there is in fact one because there are moments you know when some somehow let us say even if we make a point to express love through our work there were days when i was feeling no love at all to express so i was struggling i was thinking like how can i express love in my work when i am feeling no love and which is to say that i was only on the surface and that is why we have these techniques and i see that technique is nothing but like a submarine which can take you to the depth of an ocean because when you use a technique it helps you to go deeper from the surface and then you can feel that it is always there and at one point you know in bhagavad gita also because some sometimes you know our techniques can become mechanical so swami said that you don't have to keep god away while practicing a technique which is to say that god is not only the goal but also a solution and that is how we have to remember and keep him in our heart while practicing it but you know there are instances you know when as i was you know it it happened because uh, just a few days ago there was one presentation which i had to make and i was reading the book i read the complete book i read all the articles i read you know i went through the videos of uh, people those who are talking on that subject but still i was struggling and i was not able to you know gel the whole thing together so that it becomes you know kind of convincing to the people to whom we are taking and it should it should you know fulfill their needs and at the at the same time it should be fulfilling for me so that you know i feel that yes we are doing it in the right spirit and i kept on struggling with those things and praying and i realized that as i was praying deeply suddenly a flash came and it became started making sense out of it and all that you know which i was trying to make it it became possible now i feel that in a devotee's life i think those moments will sooner or later going to come when he will feel pushed to the wall and no matter what you are trying you will see that there is no ray of light you can see at that moment and i feel that we should be grateful for those moments because when we when we are pushed to the wall when we are praying and something is uh, nothing is happening by our own efforts it is like coming down to our knees and we pray 
and in that moment you know when we are able to receive our heart opens we are able to receive and the solution comes we realize that it was not i who was doing it it was always god who was giving me the right thought the right ideas which i was just receiving and it was flowing through me and in that moment you know the ego breaks or i should say that ego dissolves itself because sometimes we feel that we have to battle with the ego it is there's nothing no no it is not like battling it just falls off automatically because you realize you realize it is a kind of self honesty that you see who is the real doer and i would like to quote i would like to you know share with you one incident when i went by when i met swami kriyananda ji that was in 2010 i guess it was about few years later after receiving my kriya and i i could you know meet him personally with my family and after just about a brief uh, moment when he talked to me uh, briefly and he blessed all of us and then he said would you like to ask any question and when i was with him absolutely no question was coming to my mind but i thought that i want to stay in this blissful surrounding so i must ask something otherwise he will say okay 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 then bye bye <laughs> so so it's nothing was coming to my mind but i said sir would you like to give me some message any message would you like uh, any message which comes to your mind with that you like to give me and he said only one message god is the doer and i just understood i just took it but i could not understand anything of it god is the doer it was i who went to seek the appointment with swami and talk to lakshman and i am earning my livelihood and i am doing all this thing but if swami says it must be true so without any understanding i came back and uh, i took his blessings he touched he gave me blessings and everybody and it was but that experience itself is was what was there which was which has which i can never forget but you know in all these years slowly i have started realizing what he meant when he said god is the doer and there are many things in scriptures which tell us that it is nothing worthwhile can happen in life without him which is to say that he is the sole doer in the whole universe but still it is so difficult to understand and but i i really sincerely feel that that moment you know which i feel should come to all of us sooner or later in all devotees life and sooner it comes better it is and more frequently it comes it is good for us because that is the real moment when we realize that we are one with him and he is doing everything through us the other aspect you know which i feel is was is important is that as uh, in order to channelize god which i felt that when we feel him in our hearts you know every act easily becomes a karma yoga now people sometimes feel that making hospitals making schools is karma yoga but it is not so swami very clearly mentions that if we are expressing love through our act it becomes karma yoga because see we have to remember that this is the only question the saint gabriel or god is going to ask us how do you love deeply so let us make it a habit you know i have my prayer is sometimes very simple i love you god please help me that's it whatever you are doing you don't have to be very formal yogananda was i think the first person who said god doesn't like formality he is very simple talk to him in your own language i love you god please help me and then whatever thing that you are doing do it with whatever love that you are feeling in your heart and that act will become a karma yoga for you and it could be even a mundane task of driving the car or washing the dishes or writing even an email 
because it is not what you are doing but how you are doing which will make it a karma yoga and at one point you know yogananda said that i just will not do anything without love because when i don't love when i'm when love when love is not flowing through me i wilt away now those are that is the way you know masters work and th- at this point if you see the shloka is all about heart and uh, i was thinking to end actually my satsang at this point when suddenly i received a call from one of my guru bhais who said that i want you to check something in rajayoga book because there is something which he wanted to discuss with the uh, with his friend and as i was reading that topic which was the subject of the discussion suddenly there was one page which i started reading and here was swami ji you know talking about something which made me realize that i don't have to stop here there is something beyond this which is to say that how god is playing through all of our lives and he can he can just chip in at any moment and what i read was that even when we are doing something with love there is always a separation that i am a channel through which i am channeling god's love in that act but still there is a separation between i and god because i am allowing that love to flow through me and but then swami has written that this is not the goal for us you know many saints actually have gone up to that level when they think when because it's a very lovely feeling when you love god and when when you allow love to flow through you it's a very sweet feeling swami said and somehow many saints actually stayed at that point and they thought that oh i don't have to go beyond and they just enjoyed that i and thou relationship and in fact mirabai was one such saint mirabai as you know was a very devotional saint she used to sing lot of chants to krishna and she was always singing to the god and she always stayed in that feeling of i and thou relationship but you know after mirabai there also became became a, another woman saint which swami said was gauri bai this was 300 years later mirabai came probably in 16th century and she came 300 years later and gauri bai was also very devotional she used to write chants and also offer prayers and bhajans to the lord but gauri bai was very different in one aspect that sometimes she used to become so impersonal that she used to live in stillness in the state of still samadhi for almost sometimes 15 days altogether which is to say and swami writes that guru of gauri bai told her that you in your previous incarnation was mira bai but because you could not achieve that state state of oneness with the lord because you kept yourself in that state of i and thou relationship so you have to reincarnate again because the goal is to merge in god to become one with him and that is why doing a task with god is not enough doing a task living in him is what we have to aspire for that is why we were chanting live in god rest in god live in god in his light in his love and i was thinking that maybe this is how we can we we can you know take this i was uh, if you if we read this shloka again which you know krishna is talking here thus with love absorb all your heart's feelings in me with heart absorbed in me you shall by my grace overcome every impediment that is to say that when we live in him there is nothing to fear because we are always living in him it is just a smriti as patanjali said 
that suddenly, and Swamiji said that it is very important that you, when you practice meditation, we must practice with this feeling, not only with love, but also that I am formless, I have no body. Feel yourself, because the real essence of all of us is formless, and then it becomes much more easier to feel that oneness and to become one with him. In fact, one of the best techniques that Master has given us is the Om technique, which can dissolve all the boundaries, and you will feel that you are already one with him. And then the state of, the highest state which a saint has to reach is Aham Brahmasmi, which will be ever attainable for all of us. <laughs>